We're here to answer your game, gaming, and game night questions. You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or go over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. My social media works too. We're everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Well, the best way for questions to come to us is through the website. We're not going to say no to a question asked anywhere. It is the last Wednesday of the month. And that means we're, uh, we're asking... <laughs> I've lost I don't know my where place. Sean is. Uh, yeah. Uh, it is last Wednesday in October, Devil's Night, and the day before Halloween. We set aside last Wednesday of the month to answer your questions live. All right. Let's start by welcoming everyone here in the lobby again. That's our chat room. That's what we like to call the people who have visited the Bellhop Hotel during our show. Um, tonight's our Halloween Hangout Q&A. Thank you very much and taking part in this monthly report. R report? Monthly <laughs> event. I don't know where a report came from. I have right. no idea. All right. Well, we're going to start off with our first question, a little bit off the gaming topic, but definitely on brand. Coffee question. Would you prefer the flavoring to be in the coffee or added by a flavored creamer? Uh, for me, in the coffee. Definitely in the coffee. Uh, flavored creamers, like I like some flavored creamers, but I'd rather try like everything mixed together like it's supposed to be there, whereas sometimes when you add it, it doesn't go as well. Plus, I find when you're adding with creamer, it's hard to get the percentage right. Like, it's going to taste a little different every time. Yeah, Excuse me, every time you do it. Absolutely. And my other problem is I don't put anything in my coffee. I drink black oh. coffee exclusively. So if the flavor is not in the coffee, I'm not getting the flavor, generally. Yeah, we used to go to coffee shops that charge for the, the the shots of flavor, and I never found they were worth it. No. Like, I, like I always preferred to get an Irish cream coffee rather than, say, get a Colombian with an Irish cream shot. Right. Uh, for a while, my wife was doing uh, when they when they killed the um, caramel lattes in here in Canada for the Tassimo, uh, we picked up a bottle of the, the caramel mixer and we, she was just doing plain lattes. But it, yeah, it just wasn't the same. She never really that we, I've got a bottle of caramel somewhere because it just it wasn't the same and it never never happened. Yep, fair enough. All right. So uh, we have a question from the subscriber May Suggins. What is the best way to tell someone you hate a game without hurting their feelings or sounding like a jerk? Hmm. I like be honest, right? Like, I think that's the, the, the important part is let them know, just say, Hey, I'm not really enjoying this. I am not having fun. Uh, I think the important part in that question is depends who the person is too. Like, if you are playing with the designer or you're playing with, you know, someone who's tied to the game, it's going to be different than if you're just playing with your friends. Like if I was playing with my Monday night group and I hated a game, I, it'd probably be pretty dang obvious I hate that game. And I probably would have said it multiple times and I probably would have said why. Um, but if I'm playing a game with a designer, it's a little different, right? Um, looking at it that way, if I don't want to insult anyone, I need to determine what I don't like about the game and if it's just not the right game for me or if it's just a bad game. If it's not the right game for me, that's what I'll tell someone. So, for example, um, I will use One Child's Heart. I wouldn't say I hated that game, but I didn't really have a fun experience playing that game. Not that that game's even supposed to invoke a fun experience, but it's not what I'm looking for in an RPG. And I explain that to the person who wrote the game. I'm like, this is a neat game. It does something I've never seen before. I'm glad I got to try it, but it's not something I'm interested in playing again. That is where a game, there was nothing wrong with it. It's just not for me. Then there's a game where you play it and you're like, this is broken. That's completely different. In that case, it depends if the person's looking for feedback or not. If they're open to feedback, I'll explain why. But I'll be like, no, you know what? I didn't, I, I didn't enjoy that very much. And then if they want more information, I'll give them more information. So an example of that, I'm thinking Sean probably has a better example of this. I, I keep thinking of the time you and Deanna were at Breakout and played that um, the playtest game, like the, yes. the prototype. Yep, yep. And, and the person was looking for it. Like, you guys didn't hate it, but there were things you didn't like. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it was just a matter of, hey, you know what? You've got some, some ideas here. Uh, I think you've got a concept you're working with, and, and that's fine. But... You know, it seems like it, it was uh, some of the randomness was off and some of the, you know, it was just, you know, D was able to do some certain moves within the game and, and just there was no risk at all. Yeah. Um, and, and considering the theme of the game, it just didn't seem right. Uh, and so, you know, that they, but they were there, they were there playtesting. They were looking for advice. Yeah. If someone has just spent, you know, if someone has just spent $150 on Gloomhaven and you're really not enjoying it, it's tough. I, it, I can understand how that's tough, but at the same time, Sitting there and being unhappy as you play it week after week is not going to be any good yeah. for anyone. And that's going to create a toxic environment. So first off, 
don't wait. Mm -hmm. uh, get it out there. And, you know, be as polite as possible. You know, you, you don't need to, you don't need to say, oh, I think your game is horrible, or I think this game is horrible. Mm -hmm. Again, hate is something, is a strong emotion that you really don't actually need all that often. Uh, you know, this game isn't that enjoyable for me. This isn't the type of game I'm looking for. Uh, or I think there's some problems with this game that maybe we'll, maybe we can house rule this game. Maybe we can, mm -hmm. maybe we can make something out of this game, but right now it's not doing it for me. Uh, and then the other option is looking at, uh, creative, creative criticism. So if you are sitting down with the, with the board game designer, uh, work on terms that, that help improve the game. So if you can't stand the way they have randomized something, talk about, maybe improving ways uh, of randomizing things. Don't talk about how bad that is. Talk about ways that you can improve that there. They'll figure out that you don't like it, but you're offering positive suggestions rather than the negative uh, emotion. Yeah, I think that I think the important thing too is explain why. Yeah. Not just, wow, this game sucks. I hate this game. Like, <laughs> why? What, yep. What's wrong with it? What don't you like? And like I say, I think there's a distinction between games that aren't right for you and games that just aren't good right like yep. <laughs> there, there, there is definite difference there especially if you're doing play tests right games can be broken they can be wrong absolutely or they can just be not fun right like the, the like i have people who come out to our events are like you want to play monopoly with us and i'm like no i actually i don't but if you like that kind of game maybe you might like this uh ryan ryan in the in the uh, lobby is saying he's found it challenging to give play test feedback off a single play and that's absolutely true uh, I find, it, again, a lot of it is sort of couching your terms. Uh, you know, if you've only played once, you can comment on randomness, but you can't give an absolute statement. You you can't give the same kind of comment as if you played it five times and really gotten to experience the randomness of something. Uh, one play is only going to give you so much. I mean, you can flip a coin a hundred times and mm -hmm. get heads all, every time. Yep. Um, but you can get a feel for whether something is heading in the right direction or not and, and indicate that. Yeah, the hard part about playtest like feedback for a single play is very important nowadays, though. As we've talked about many times in the last year, so many board games now are one and done. Yep. So that first play experience is very, very important. So if you don't, like, you, the, the, the developer needs that feedback. Yep. Even if it's your first play and you're like, you know what, this feels like I, I didn't get it. I, yep. I, I feel like I need to play again to really grasp it. That's really important to get that across. What? Because... Nowadays, it's honest, like there, there's a feed where um, Isaac Shalev has been commenting on it, who's a, a well-known game designer, about a game from Aldrich Entertainment Group that came out less than three months ago that's already 46% off on Amazon. And just it's driving Isaac nuts. He's like, I don't get it. Like the, the, the board game life cycle right now is is tiny. Like it's there's no time. It's not even a year. Like it's yeah. three months. If your game isn't a hit in three months and like no games are being evergreen anymore. Yeah. Like even Azul, no one's talking about Azul anymore. We don't even talk about Azul much anymore. Like I mentioned it now, but like I, I started pumping it, pimping is probably the wrong word, pushing Imhotep over Azul because yep. I've moved on to a different type of gateway game. Yep. Now there's a new Azul with diamonds. And to be honest, no one's talking about Sintra. Like I don't hear anyone mention that game anymore. And, and in I, my opinion, for good reason. Yeah, I think we I think we know why that happened. Yeah, I mean, the big thing, the big, big takeaway I took from the uh, panels at Breakout Con last year was... Fail early, fail often. Yeah. So, you know, break, break, get out there and break your game as soon as possible so that you aren't six months into your development cycle when you find mm -hmm. out that no one's buying it and you're discounting it for 46% off. Another thing to point out, just going a little tie back to the original question so you don't be a jerk, is make sure the person knows it's about the game, not them. And that may be very hard to separate for some designers or people yep. who are closely tied to the game. Um... A good way to do that is make sure you play other games with that person, right? So that you don't just play this one game from them that you don't like it and you cut up that game, you never see the person again. They may take that personal. Whereas if you're at a gaming event, you play their game, they don't like it, go, hey, why don't you try a game I really like and sit down and play a game with them and treat them like a person. Yep. Then they may realize, because they may just be thinking you're a jerk or you don't know what you're talking about. Like if you sit down and play a different game together, you can at least get that personal connection as yep. well. Again, at a con, that's a little bit more difficult, but... Uh, Ryan has a great comment. Some designers use mechanisms because they personally like them and yes. not because they are the best implementations of mm -hmm. what they want to provide in a game. And that's a real problem. And again, that is something that goes to what you just said about taking things personally. A designer yeah. can have a hard time separating them, get themselves from their game. 
Yes. Uh, so if you can remove them from that game and from that situation to talk with them and, and have a chat with them over something else and, mm-hmm. and, and, and separate from that game, uh, give, give some space and some breathing room that will help them depersonalize anything you might say. Um, okay, coming up next, uh, let's take a look at, uh, we have a question from Ranch B from the blog. What do you do when you have a steady weekly group? And as time goes by, you've got one player who's getting less willing to play other games. After all, four players say, ooh, let's play that. And player five is the only one often doing the, I don't think I'd like that, play something else. It depends how well you know player five, I guess. Uh, the, the obvious thing is, is we're getting to the, we mention them now and then on the show, the, so, the geek social fallacies. If you are not having fun playing with player five and player five is not having fun playing with you, why are you playing with player five? Uh, there is no obligation to play with player five. Even if they're a sibling, there's probably other things you can do with them. Unless mom's sitting there saying you have to play with your brother. Um, like even if it's a significant other, there's probably other things you'd enjoy doing together. I get that people probably want to share time together. If they're close friends and it's a group that's been getting together for years. I don't know. It's, it's, it's all about being an adult and actually talking about it. Um, We've talked about enthusiastic consent before. If you can't get enthusiastic consent and the problem is one player, the problem isn't the consent, it's that player. Uh, You probably want to try to find a common ground. Uh, Here's again where you want to find out why, right? So instead of player, I don't think so, I don't think I'd like that, find out what they do like. And then maybe find something the other players do like that they like. Find out what it is that they're scared of in that game they don't want to play. Maybe they don't like world building and indie role playing games. Maybe they don't like narrative control. They just want to roll dice. Maybe they really have a hard time with abstract concepts and games like engine builders just are difficult for them for whatever reason that may be. Um, So maybe find a game that all five of you will enjoy, right? Oh, well, we know you can't play engine builders because you don't get the abstract thinking required to do that. How about social deduction games or how about cooperative games or looking at a different venue or we'll just, you know what you won't do. You don't want to play like a power by the apocalypse super world building game and we don't really want to play D. how about something more in the middle with a bit of narrative control so how about some like 13th age or something like that like maybe you can find a middle ground but if you can't it's probably better for everyone including that player if you split the group up absolutely and now when we, we say split the group up that doesn't necessarily mean you have to throw them away yeah. now what it could be as simple as you know three weeks a month you play civ and that fourth week with you bring you back player five and you play worker placement games because that's what their real love and, and design is. And they and they don't like, you know, Civ or whatever, you know, to Twilight Imperium, uh, you know, they don't want to play that. So you play that for the majority where the rest of the players are all all in on it. And then that one week you find something that everybody wants to do mm-hmm. and do that or two weeks, you know, however the balance works out. Uh, but, you know, just because you've got a steady weekly gaming group doesn't mean every single person has to be there Mm -hmm. every single time. Just don't do the thing we did when we were kids and do the passive aggressive thing where you like change the game night from Monday to Tuesday and don't tell player five. Yeah. Be adults about it. Yeah. Um, Assuming you're adults. I don't know how old ranch (laughs) ranch B is, but assuming you're adults, um, like let, let people know, talk about it, right? Like share your feelings. It's, it's even, even though we're men, we, you know, get rid of, pull, throw that BS out and sit down and be like, Hey, look, this isn't working. Let's find out why. Let's see yeah. if there's a way to fix. And if there's not, we have to change the group. Now, uh, Ryan's mentioning someone else and I'm, and I'm not going to mention their name necessarily, but there's someone who's in a sticky situation where the one player he would really rather not have in the gaming group is in a relationship with someone who they do want in the, in the gaming group. Again, you have to sit down like that. You yeah. need to talk to that, not necessarily that couple, but talk to the person you do want and be like, look, your significant other. The, the, here's the reasons why. Again, explain why. Right. Not just, hey, we don't want your wife showing yeah. up. Like, look, when your wife shows up, she's distracting you. You're not paying attention to the game. You're doing this or, hey, when your husband's here, he's domineering and he doesn't quite get the concepts of the game and he's being aggressive or hey when your wife shows up she hogs the table and like whatever it happens to be right um you want to you want to find out what the problem is and again maybe you can fix the problem and then everything's hunky dory and then you have a bigger group and everyone's having a great time like maybe it's just someone who's not comfortable around other people and have some awkward social habits that they can work on on their own um if it doesn't work again like there, there's no obligation 
to let people's significant others play. That was something we used to have a problem with. Again, this is back when I was in university and high school, so we didn't know better. So it'd be like one player would show up with the girlfriend of the week, right? Like, and sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. And then sometimes you had the girlfriend that jumped all the other players week after week, which just made things even more awkward because then there were bitter feelings between the other players, right? But that, that's outside the game stuff, right? Yeah. Sit down, talk about it. Be like, hey, you know, I want you to play. I don't want them to play. What yeah. can we do to get this to work? Maybe the answer is if if that person has to make a decision. Maybe they don't play anymore and do something else with their significant other and find a group that's a better fit. Uh, I don't I don't believe you should ever have a well if you want me to play you have to take my partner. That situation yeah. should never arise. That's in, incredibly rude uh and and not okay. Uh and if that's the case then some definite talking needs to happen about the whole situation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know I, I I am more than happy to be friends with a person, uh, but just because they have another person that they are friends with doesn't mean I need to be friends with them. You know, yeah. the, the whole, uh, the whole um, math relationship concept doesn't work in relationships. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so moving on from uh, relationships, is there a game, this is from uh, Ryan, is there a game you have been badly wanting to table but it just keeps getting pushed back for one reason or another. Uh, thinking. I don't know, nothing bad. There's a bunch of two-player games that Deanna and I just haven't gotten to that, like, I have packed on every vacation trip we're going to play. Stuff that's been on the pile of shame for a long time. And we always end up going with the games we know. Now, part of that is Deanna prefers to play games she knows instead of learn new games. But another part of that is... Um, just comfortable it's comfortable right like i and when we're planning the weekend it's like oh we're gonna spend three days at jacks and we're gonna play some board games and we're gonna do all this and one of the one of the games the game in particular that i keep thinking is julius caesar which is a block war game from columbia games and deanna and i like block war games we have played not a lot of them but like um hammer of the scots is fantastic and wizard kings is the other one both from columbia games similar mechanics really neat games and julius caesar's rated almost as good as hammer of the scots but not quite but Deanna prefers the theme more. She likes the Roman theme better than the Scottish versus the English theme. So I'm thinking she may enjoy the game even more. So, but I keep packing it, and then we get there, and we play the Duke, and we play Onitama, and we play... Um, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the other the ones we've been playing. The Patchwork, that's the other one we've been playing a lot. right? And we just end up playing the ones we're comfortable with. Now, I, I don't know. like it's 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 I read the rules. We know how to play. And just once we're there at the coffee shop in the hotel, we just never play them. Right. So, yeah, I just kind of rather play something we know sometimes. And as Deanna points out, sometimes when it's the two of us, we do like craft beer. And once you've had a couple of those, learning a new block new war game bad. just yep. <laughs> doesn't seem like the best choice. Not 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 your not your best go to to learn something new when you're uh, pouring them back and enjoying enjoying the night. Yes. Now, the opposite, though, is role playing games. My God, there are like three that I just really want to flip and play. And I just can't get. A steady group like my Monday night group. I, I complained about it a lot online. I still love these guys. We still have a good time, but they are just so inconsistent. Now they are getting way better at someone showing up every Monday now. And we've been better at it. But like two, three, I don't even know, three weekends ago, we finally had the whole group together. I wasn't prepared to have the whole group together. And I was probably I'm playing board games. and We played a bunch of games of Horizons. And then I'm like, all right, we're done Horizons. And I thump Dungeon Crawl Classics on the table. And I show it to them and I'm like, all right, I know you guys kind of want to play D&D. How about this? This is like D&D. There was a whole conversation on Twitter where I was talking about my group wants to play D&D. What do you do? Do you play D&D? Because I don't I don't want to learn fifth at D&D right now. I did fourth ed for years. I did before that. I just don't want to play D&D. I want to do something different. So I threw it down and I started showing people the arts and the charts and the tables and everything. And everyone bought in. And then I went and I gave the entire group sets of dice because I had bought these two Christmases ago, because that is how long I have been trying to get this group to play Dungeon Crawl Classics. So I gave them the dice, I got everything out, and it's been three weeks. We have not gotten a full group together since. So I really want to play Dungeon Crawl Classics. Uh, Shadow of the Demon Lord's another one. And my God, I badly owe someone a review of Runaway Hirelings, and I just can't get the group together to do it. Yeah, no, it's tough. Uh, and especially, you know, as we talk about it time and time again, as we get older... It's just, you know, we have so many kids and family obligations and, you know, this meeting to go to and this school event to go to it. It just becomes tough. 
yeah. <laughs> work for a yeah. lot of people. Like yeah. we, we have, we have a, one of the members of my group travels for work. Like he's in Germany one week and then he's in Quebec and then he's all over the place. Yeah. So he, he's one of the players It's bad for that. Then we have another player who really, really wants to show up but his work has been terrible for about two years. And I literally have not seen the guy in over a year now at this point. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of shift work in Windsor. That's definitely yeah. a, a big, a big issue. All right. Uh, so uh, with Halloween tomorrow night, this is coming from D. If you were going to a Halloween themed party and you could bring one board game, what would it be? One. Mm. <laughs> Trying to think through. Oh, it depends. If it's like party drinking and everything, Skull. If it was like a costume party, everyone's going to be having drinks in their hands, I would bring Skull. Skull and Roses, whichever version you want to go with. It's a game based on coasters. It's semi-social deduction, pusher luck betting. It was a game invented by biker gangs that you can mass market and buy now. Um, probably that. Um, part of me wants to say Werewolf for that one version of that, just because if you don't know the group, it's the game that works, and that's the one setting where I'd probably end up playing it, especially if it's a party, not a gaming event. Um if I knew there were going to be gamers there and we had tables and that, maybe King of Tokyo for, for getting the theme. Definitely, I, I, I'd i think Tower of Madness, but it's just not that good. It, it well, looks cool. It does. And it takes forever to set up. And and unfortunately, you know, a lot of Halloween parties are, a, you know, drinking parties. And yeah. that's not really a, you know... A it, it's game. not a silly, laughy game. No, it it looks not. like it should be, and it's not... Yeah. I got an old card game. You know, it's been too long since I played it. I, I brought it out to the last two events. We're going to be talking about Halloween games later. Um, last two events called Spooks. And it's uh, it's a game with four suits. And the suits are like bats, skeletons, spider webs or something like that. And they are, um, they all do something different. I The thing is, I haven't read the rules in so long. But I remember that being a real good. So it's it's good if you play with people who know like hearts or whatever those. It, it's a variant of hearts where you're picking how many suits you're going to get. But then each suit does something. So if you play Spiders at Trump, you capture cards or something like that. I honestly, it's Steve Jackson games, but it's been so long since I played it. Like if I had gotten that played at one of the last two events, that'd probably be my answer. Um, Monster Factory, I've been playing a lot. I'm kind of jumping ahead though. Cause uh, Ryan, about Ryan's out asking about Dread. I say I don't own it. I've never read it. it. It's a horror RPG. I hear 10 Candles is fantastic for horror gaming. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I I don't really have much in the way of Halloween games. I I I would consider if I if it was RPGers, it came from the late 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 show. I've got it on the yeah, shelf. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good uh, a good Halloween game because you can throw it up. Yeah, that's a good call. That is a good one for for Halloween. Though again, I haven't read it in so long, right. I wouldn't know what to do with it. Yeah, I'm sure it's simple enough. I remember yeah, the no, character it, sheets. Yeah, it was a it was a pretty quick pickup, so wouldn't be too worried about that. I don't think. Yeah, uh, if I, only had, I don't know. Out of all those, if I only had to bring one. I like I like uh, skulls. I mean, it, I haven't yeah, played it yet, but I, I know we've skull. talked about it on, on other uh, on other podcasts, and, and it's a good. It's a, solid. And, and the theme is actually more Day of the Dead, but it's skulls. It fits yeah. for Halloween. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see what do we got coming up here next. We've got uh, what is everyone's favorite Halloween candy, and has it changed from when you were a kid, Ryan. Uh, for me, it's caramels. I love caramels. And I think it's changed because I swear I used to prefer Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. <laughs> Those uh, are, I, I'm into the chocolate bars. I want the chocolate bars, the little tiny ones. Yeah. Oh, the full ones are even better. Well, but yeah. chocolate bars for me are my favorite Halloween candies. Um, I, I also, you know what? The only time I eat them when it, when it cuts around to Halloween is um, Runts from Wonka. I love okay. Runts. Yep. But it, that I only ever get them around Halloween. Yeah. I, like, I would never go buy Runts at a store, and I never have. But I enjoy those because I don't only get them at Halloween, so that's right. why I like. Yeah, uh, for me, it's got to be Coffee Crisp, uh, hands down. Either Coffee Crisp uh, yeah. with 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 Kit Kat coming in a close second, but not quite. I love chocolate and yeah, crunch. Caramel milks are Canadian. Uh, Oops, I love sorry. I love the chocolate and the crunch, but I don't do uh, I don't do caramel at all. I, I don't like caramel. So, I, I love caramel. I always have caramel. And then at Easter, I want the caramel. Um, uh, Cadbury cream eggs. They do the caramel eggs now, and yeah. uh, <laughs> they do uh, caramel soft uh, Santas at Christmas. Yeah. I, I don't know. Caramel Ryan with... Ryan's saying peanut butter cups, and I know that is a huge thing. People. It was when I was a kid. Their Reese's. For some reason, like I love peanut butter. I eat a lot of peanut butter, but I think it's the kind of peanut butter I like because 
I can't stand peanut butter oh. in my chocolate. I don't like Reese. It actually See, only Reese does it right. Other, Reese and um, Planters. Planters peanut butter cups are actually better than Reese. Yeah. Planters, well, it's Planters peanuts. It kind of makes sense. So, yeah, it, for some reason, I you know, while I eat peanut butter all the time, peanut butter and chocolate for me is just a back, yeah, I back no, off. I, big fan. Uh, as, well, as a younger kid, I did a lot more sugar than chocolate. Like I was big into, uh, well, what the Americans call Smarties, what we call uh, Rockets. the Rockets. Yeah. Um, My kids uh, love those. I, I'm yeah. never as a kid. Fan. As a kid, I did, uh, but now it's like, oh wow, that's just too much sugar. I can't can't do that much sugar. Like, so for the sugar candies, I'm still a big fan of Wonka, Runts, Gobstoppers, Sweet Tarts. Um, yeah, I do uh, the sour stuff. Is if I'm gonna go, if I'm gonna do the the candy candy, I go no. to the sours first. Um, that's usually my go-to. Sour, I, I have to be in the right mood for sour. Mm. I'll uh, I'll do the sours or uh, watermelon. If you give me a watermelon, either like a Jolly Rancher, Jolly Rancher, or the Jolly Rancher lollipops, anything watermelon, I'm there. There you go. But yeah, it's still chocolate bars. Like for Halloween, that's the one I want to find. I yeah. want to find the chocolate bars. Yep. I dig the candy though. And I still love uh, the potato chip bags that you get for Halloween. It's like three chips. I can't inside. stand those. Like why, why would three plain chips? Why would anyone want this? I don't know. Wow. I, I've never been a big chip fan, even though we can get ketchup chips here. That's true. But no, I'm, I'm not a Doritos are better than chips. And even then that, that's see, I don't the like, worst. Cor- we, I don't we, like we corn should products. answer the worst. I, I hate candy corn. Yeah. And every, well, everything waxy, like it, the candy pumpkins and, but no, what's worse than that. I don't even know if this still exists. And Sean will remember these as a kid. The toffee that was in the orange and black wrappers, yep. whatever the hell that was called, yeah, yeah. It's whoever like the generic, hell made it, generic Halloween toffee. It's you know, yeah, like it was garbage. I, I'd rather eat candy corn. That stuff was the worst. I don't know who the hell made that stuff. It was everywhere in Windsor. I don't know if it was a Windsor thing or if it was a worldwide thing. But these like twisted up ghosts and haunted houses on them, yellow wrapper toffee. Oh, that was the worst. Yeah, uh, Mage Kill is talking about prawn cocktail chips. Uh, yes. They're a British thing. I actually bought a case of them last summer oh, there you go. <laughs> to have around. Uh, I do love prawn cocktail chips. Absolutely. Uh, oh, that uh, stuff was terrible. Ugh. Uh, and now I'm grossed out by this. this. And see, and, I, I've never liked any of the little caramels, the little uh, the little brown cube things. See, the brown cubes were okay. And see, I, I th- those were no. better than the other, but... I, like Tootsie Rolls. I can't even eat a Tootsie yeah, Roll. Yeah, I don't like Tootsie Rolls. It's eh. none, none of that. It's... That's also like caramel, basically. A caramel yeah. is like a caramel toffee. They're all kind of the same. Yeah, yeah. It's just, and it's just never really worked for me for whatever reason. And I think, like, and you're saying you're like Doritos. While I will lick a Dorito clean, I don't like corn chips. I don't like corn, oh, see, I love corn-based corn chips. products don't work for me. Yeah, I'll, I'll eat them. Chips. I'll eat them in a, like if, if you're going out and you're buying like a big plate of nachos, like real yeah. bar nachos. And I mean, these nachos are fantastic. I was gonna um, say, no, <laughs> don't cook nachos when Sean's in town. No, no, no. These nachos are fantastic, uh, but that's because they they take on everything else. But yeah. if you just give me a corn chip of even even if it's like Dorito corn chip, it, yeah. it tastes too much like corn. So that's uh, one of my favorite things is corn, like plain corn chip Fritos, plain, not barbecue, not right. nacho, just plain corn chips. Yeah, my wife and daughter, same thing. They like my my daughter's taking tos, Tostitos and cheese to school now and i'm like no okay, more power to you you won't, you yep. won't get me stealing those uh, that was a good one i, I like that we had a non-gaming ama question now yeah. we've proven it. it's an ama all right uh what do we have here uh which board game themed costume or cosplay oh, would you drape, drape dress up as <laughs> i don't even know what the <laughs> hell could you dress i would be a big yellow meeple uh, there's got to be something. And when, when I think about this, there's got to be something. But um, see, this one's an easy one for me, and it's kind of a cheat because I actually have a Hagrid costume already in go. my closet. So I just, you know, I've got my, uh, I've got my Harry Potter board games and, and card games, and I've got my Hagrid costume. There, I guess that'll work. I'm like, I don't know. Using a license game seems like cheating. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, yeah, if I could do the Craighart from from uh, Gloomhaven, that'd be pretty sweet. Well, yeah, because I, I really recommend Hart. not going into public with your bone saw yes. costume. I, I was thinking <laughs> about that. I've, I, if I just put the bayonet out my pants, it would totally <laughs> look like the bone saw. I wear my trench coat, and it'd be all good. Yeah, I'd be yeah. like, "Here you go. What are you supposed to be? <laughs> look at my I'm sword. a bone saw. I'm a bone saw." 
Bones up. Bones up. Uh, and she game says, not a vermling. Yes. Uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. The Gloomhaven characters. That'd be kind of cool. Like cosplay. You could definitely cosplay as Gloomhaven characters. <laughs> that was the Halloween when Mo got arrested. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah. Gloomhaven characters. I, I, that's probably the best I could think of. I was even thinking like Imperial Assault characters. Like the really cool, badass Star, Star Wars characters. But like, right. I played the DM. I'm like, I go. dress as Darth <laughs> Vader. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm, I keep thinking there's a better answer here, but that, that, I think that's it. Can you there go as a piece of interesting stained, ones though? Can, like, can you go as a piece of stained glass? That way you're covering both Sintra and, uh, um, <laughs> you know, go. how many, how many that's different just, stained glass games are there? Right yeah, that now? was a thing for a little while. That was kind of weird. No, like, like, you, like, I don't. No one knows the game Menu Masters, but like the first player token for Menu Masters could be an interesting thing you could dress up as or. I, I'm not sure people have done whatever Mr. Moneybags from Monopoly, whatever oh, his name is. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Meeple are kind of getting old and stale. So. Yeah. It'd be hard to walk around in like a giant full Meeple suit. Um, I've, seen, like, I've seen a few, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Like yeah. Meeple, definitely. And then I got to think RPGs. I don't know. Anything Warhammer. I think yeah. I tried it a couple times. <laughs> Had that one costume. Or Put on a giant. What is Put on a giant dry erase board and your telestrations from Major Killa. There you go. Just right, right. Games with translucent pieces are attractive. That's that's where you get arrested, right there. Yeah, yeah. You don't dress <laughs> up as you can dress up as an Azul tile, not a Sintra tile. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> all right. While we're on a uh, quirky topic, Chad Roberts asked on Twitter if a Minotaur laughs hard enough, will milk come out his nose? So the first thing I come thought when I nose. saw that. Is Minotaur gendered? Like I think a male when I hear Minotaur. A Minotaur is is a is a, is a bull head on yeah. a male. So a Minotaur yeah, that's, that's is a say. male. Uh, well, I would think by they definition. Have drank milk, right? Because like Minotaurs shouldn't be able to produce milk of their own right. normally. So like like I, I know in D and D, Minotaur is a race. You I think you can play female. And I know um, Paco. Oh, I'm for, gonna forget his last name from GMS Magazine who is a, a very flamboyant out man who is very vocal in the, the gay community in Spain, played a female minotaur who fed the party from his udders, which really disturbed one of the party members and because they couldn't accept the fact that this could be a thing, right? They, right. they weren't accepting of that happening in a game. It, it broke their fragile little brain that, that such a thing could happen and they were disgusted by it. And... I was like, I am a female minotaur. I have udders. I produce milk. You're starving. Come on. So, but uh, classically, uh, in, in the official mythology, as described by Ovid, the minotaur is the head of a bull on the body of a man. Right. That's the description. So if we're following mythology and not looking at d d races, then if a bull were to find a source of milk while, yeah. while, while amused, then it's possible. But... Here's the, here's the big thing. The actual nutritional requirements of an animal of that size uh, and the fact that he, they were only ever fed humans uh, that were dropped off into the maze once a year, uh, they really wouldn't have any source of milk. So unless we go back to childhood and we look at the infant <laughs> minotaur suckling at its mother's teeth, teat, there's really no chance of a minotaur snorting milk out its nose if it lasts. There you go. So thank you, Chad, for that little uh, Minotaur moment. For some reason, I am slightly reminded of how many moose fit in a bathtub. Uh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> or various Garfield questions. Uh, yes. As well. um, yes. All right. Uh, now, on. even a female Minotaur would have to drink the milk because absolutely, yes. it, it doesn't work nope, nope. that way. Yeah, no, absolutely. There's no question. There is no internal method to get milk from the breast yes. to the nose with laughter. No, not, although minotaurs <laughs> are fake, so I guess you could invent something like that. But that sounds like something out of a weird anime. Yeah, yeah. And no, at that's... that, I think it's time to move to another Moving question. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> so was there ever a game so bad that it made you want to stop playing games altogether or a beer so bad that it made you want to stop drinking beer? This is from May Seconds. Uh, no, no, nothing's <laughs> made me want to stop. I, the, there is like, heck, I don't even tend to dump out beers when they're horrible. There is a beer so bad. It may make someone never want to drink beer again. And that is exotic or chapeau exotique from, I'm trying to remember the brewery. 
I may be able to remember it. It is the worst beer I have ever had that I literally spit out. Like I, I couldn't even, like I swallowed the first little bit and could not finish the mouthful, let alone the bottle. Uh, bad game, like a, a, a bad enough game. I'd never want to play games. No, there's too many games out there. It just doesn't. The, the, the one game does not represent all games. Just as if, like maybe if at some point someone presented me as here is the modern world of hobby board gaming and I played it and it was so bad, I'd be like, oh, I never want to play this again. Possibly. Now, RPGs are a different story because I've seen this happen to people. And it happened to me with D&D. I played a D&D session so bad I refused to ever play D&D in my entire life. I swore I would never play it. And it took me more than 10 years before I would give D&D a shot again. It was that bad a session. So that, yes, I, I could see yeah. role-playing games because role-playing as a genre, if you're not used to it and you have a bad experience your first time, could scare you off role-playing. That, I think, could happen to me with LARPing. Though I now know enough about LARPing to know it's not all the same, but I have not done a LARP. But if I went and did one and had a horrible experience, I probably wouldn't want to do another one. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think the key to this question is uh, whether it's your first time or not. Uh, I yeah. think any experienced gamer or beer drinker knows that there's more out there worth trying. Uh, but that very first time you experience something, it can be so bad that it drives yeah. you off. Uh, I can I can think of a few hobby games uh, where if I had played them as my first game, which I don't think anyone would be cruel enough to give them to me <laughs> as my first game, uh, I would probably say, mm, you know, maybe I'm not a board gamer. Maybe Monopoly is for me. Yeah. Um, because there's a few out there that are just that brain burning, and you know if you're not prepared for it or something, you know if you do, if you haven't had a gateway to to board gaming uh, mm -hmm. moment and you haven't become a board gamer, uh, it's uh, you know it's tough. So and there's beers like that too. Again, if it's your oh. first beer and you're drinking something seriously skunky, good. <laughs> you know why yeah. would anyone drink this? You know. Well, beer does have a most almost all beer has a unique beer flavor that makes yeah. a beer. And some people just don't like that. So, yeah, it's definitely yep. a thing. But like I'm just saying, I've never tried kombucha. I'll admit I'll try kombucha once. And if I don't like it, I'll probably never try another kombucha, even though I know it's a brewed tea thing and they probably all taste different. Yep. So I, I could if someone gave me a really bad kombucha, I'd probably never try another one. But yeah, yeah, for gaming, no, especially at this point, like, like, like how it couldn't, like, there is not possible that it could be a game that bad that I'm like, no, I can't game anymore. And if you want to talk about touchy feely experiences in RPGs, I have no interest in playing another one of those, but I'm not going to quit playing RPGs because Camden touched me. All right. And while we're talking about some touchy feely RPGs and RPGs in general, I want to mention that Breakout Con tickets have gone live. Yes. They've updated their website, so Breakout Con is live and ready to go. It is March 20th to 22nd. 20th to 22nd, yes. So that uh, so the end uh, in Canada, it is the end the second weekend of the March the March break here. Um See it is. We wanted to confirm that cuz that, that date seemed late to me, but it's the second the... second weekend of March break and All it right, shouldn't perfect. actually be even slightly conflicted as it was for me last awesome. year. So all the better. I've already got it in the calendar. Awesome. Also, Queen City Conquest has announced they're moving back to September. Oh, interesting. So that is a, another announcement that came out. I knew they were big. I didn't see a date. I didn't see a date announcement. Though, an announcement I didn't though. see a date, but I just saw that they were moving. That they yeah. they, they they sent out a survey, okay. and they had enough people say that they preferred the September date. They haven't secured a venue yet. Okay. Because so I saw the announcement no that date. they're going to be bigger than ever. Like I saw the the big. Oh wait, no, that was. That was, that, was, that was Breakout. That was Breakout. Yeah, no, that was Breakout. Breakout supposed, is going to be bigger than ever. So that's yeah, awesome because QCC. next year, for next us, year, it's, it's good. Next year, I think I'm going to be in Wisconsin for uh, in July. So yeah, um, that's awesome. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, so no, no dates yet, no venue. Uh, okay, uh, here's a question from Armand Gumry via the blog. Do you own yeah. more than one quiver? Yes, actually, I have two. Uh, the only reason, though, not that I don't like them, is because the first one I had was somewhat defective. Uh, if you watch my unboxing video, you see when I find it. Now, all that was wrong was a plastic insert. And all they had to do was send me a replacement insert. They sent me an entire damn quiver. So good on Quiver for great customer support there. I was really impressed by that. Um, 
So yes, I have two quivers, but not because I went out to get two quivers. I got one quiver, had an issue with it, and they replaced it with a second quiver and let me keep the original. So yes, I do have two quivers. Yeah. And you're also not a hardcore magic player or that no. that type of, of player, um, you know, the Pokemon player who needs the multiple quivers and think, you know, I've got my Pokemon quiver and I've got my Yu-Gi-Oh quiver yeah. and I've got my magic Which quiver. Which I can totally see. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah if, if I still I were... do dig it. They're, they're no longer sponsoring anything on the show. Nope. So nope. I do still give them a thumbs up if anyone thought we had a biased opinion before. Did I give you my second quiver? Uh, I've got one. I've got, yeah, yeah, so I did. I, I Sorry, the answer is actually no. I have one. <laughs> Because right, I gave go. the other one to Sean. I, I realized that. I'm like, wait a minute. No, I gave I gave it to Sean because to hold his key forward decks and stuff. <laughs> uh, and, Ry and Ryan's mentioning that they're coming out with a two-thirds size. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they're supposed to be um, doing a smaller one. Yeah. That was one of the complaints, especially with, like, Magic, right? You don't need yeah. that much. You don't well, bring that much. Well, I mean, you know, again, Keyforge, they're rarely, I mean, only the hardcore people are going to have the, yeah. you know, a full quiver worth of Keyforge decks. You've got, you know, you've got what, go five, five different games in your quiver <laughs> last time I checked it? Yeah, out? something like that. I'll admit, I, I I don't play a lot of just card games. Most of my card yeah. games also have boards, so I need the whole yeah. thing coming with it. Uh, speaking of Quaver, we are going to have a Four Horsemen deck in our auction on Saturday Ooh. that will also be coming with custom tokens and a custom deck holder. The deck holder is really cool because it's cut so you can see the three symbols. Oh, nice. Which nice. is really nice. All right. Not pleasure. that anyone in our chat room probably cares because no one's from Windsor, but still... <laughs> There this is, for those of you listening at home, this is why you missed our Extra Life auction. Feel shame. There you go. All right. And we've got one more question to uh, wrap up the wrap up the night, unless the, uh, the chat room picks up. What are your three favorite board games to play while drunk? <laughs> three favorite board games to play while drunk. Go Cuckoo. Um, the Duke. Because I never lose when I'm drunk. I don't know why. I, 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 the more alcohol, the better I get at that game. And I, I, I honestly don't know why. Definitely those two. And Pitch Car. Those would be my three. Right. Uh, again, I don't, I don't do too much. Uh, I definitely go Cuckoo, I think, after you know, having, having yeah, experienced it. it. Go Cuckoo is right there. Uh, Climbers, I think, is, yeah. a, is a fun one while you're drunk. Uh, because the dex not only does your dexterity not matter in the game, so it's, it's just not funny. supposed to so matter. It's, so but it's, it's just starts... it's just funny. Uh, but as your thinking progresses, there's some really weird things can happen in that game if people aren't thinking clearly and just moving blocks around and things. Uh, so that can definitely definitely be a fun one. Uh, that, that's two for me. I don't I don't know what I would say for a third one. Uh, not race for the galaxy. No. Um, <laughs> but uh, definitely. Not. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't. I can't. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't say a third. I, I, I would be willing to try the Duke drunk. I haven't yet. Can't say. Um, that that goes back to the Deanna and I on vacation or on date night yeah. playing two player games. I'm pretty sure Deanna has probably played. She's noting Trajan. I'm thinking she's probably played Trajan drunk. Yeah. Not uh, Julius Caesar. <laughs> that, that was the other one we found out. Uh, All right, right, last chance chat room. You got anything? We're going to give you one last chance. Um, yeah, Breakout Con tickets are, are live. Uh, QCC tickets are not live, but it looks like they're moving to September, which to me is a good thing. So, man, I like that venue. I, the, the, that pizza place near there, I've been craving. That pizza was good. And just, yeah, I, but we the, get ramen. The we get... Bagel Jays. Man, Bagel Jays was good. Yeah, well, you don't get Bagel Jays, but we've got the ramen, and uh, we can... We... We could try the taco place again if we really yeah, wanted to risk Yeah, but they're not necessarily downtown at the hotel either, right? They, they don't have a venue, so who yeah. knows? Yeah, if they're downtown, downtown. The only thing, the one thing I did like about downtown was the 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 uh, VIP party was nice and close. Right. Not that it was a problem. And thank you, Danielle, for giving us a ride. Not that it was a problem last year, but. So, uh, one more question from the uh, chat room. What uh, Ryan asks? What is the longest session of anything you've played? Um. Okay. There's two answers here. One involves Sean, so I'm going to use that one. The one time we actually sat down and tried to play a full game of Warhammer Fantasy Battle with all of my orcs matched against all of Sean's Dark Elves in his sister's room because she was on vacation. And we started on Friday and Sunday we gave up. Yep. yep. We did not finish. Nope. We gave up. <laughs> yeah. Back back, back in the old rules of Warhammer Fantasy Battle when yeah. there was Warhammer Fantasy Battle it. first edition. Yep. Or no, second, the hardcover book. No, yeah. I didn't have the, the box set that came out. That didn't come out over here. Yeah, when you when you just played until somebody won, didn't matter, you know, days or months or years went by. Yeah, there, <laughs> there, there were no speed-up mechanics to make it a 
two to four hour tournament game then. Oh. I don't know how many points. Like, I don't remember any of those details. Yeah, no. I... And that was the addition of the rule where you need musicians and you wield and you change formations and yep. your musicians gave you bonuses to wheel and you go to wheel and fail your, I forget, fellowship, I think was the test you had to make. And if you failed it, your unit would just move straight forward. And yep. I had scenery and we were going in buildings and we had some of the siege rules. And yeah, that was, yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> we didn't finish the game after three days. Yeah. No, and we was... were like in school. So like, it was like, it was like a full weekend. Like, oh, yeah. I don't know how many hours a day we played, but, but, but more than we normally, yeah. you know, normal humans should. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, I, I think the longest game I ever played. Uh, now, if you're talking about uh, RPGs, uh, that's not sessions, I suppose, you know, longest session. No. Like, sessions, I mean, we've done, We've done, you know, day long sessions of mm. RPGs, no problem. But uh, I don't think I've ever done twenty four hours. No, no, not we. We probably come close, but not uh, like know. we regularly played for twelve hours every Saturday. Oh yeah, regularly, absolutely. like like twelve minimum every yeah. Saturday. It wasn't one game though; it was two games. We would play from noon until six, and then another game from six till midnight. Sometimes taking a break to watch a Seven Eleven buy hot dogs in between. Yeah. That was that was every Saturday for both Sean and I for a large point part of our <laughs> young adult life. Yeah. I think is yeah, yeah. We would start literally start at noon and finish at midnight, and then sometimes go back to my parents' place and play more. Yep, yep. No, absolutely. Uh, we had we had uh, our, our parents knew where we were, and it was reasonably safe. It was we weren't downtown shooting drugs. So hey, yeah. you know, uh, they once our parents got over the uh, Satanists in D and D garbage that uh, my not parents a, not my parents. your parents knew better my parents went through the satanists or D, uh, uh in D D uh fears and horrors uh but once they got over that it's like hey he's playing games at the university I, he's not you know running drugs downtown okay go yep. for it uh, <laughs> and then when so, we did hang out downtown we spent way too many hours at coffee shops exactly again they still knew where i was and my mom couldn't yep. complain he's she was just at a different coffee shop yeah, uh, <laughs> and your sister was usually at the coffee shop we were at, so exactly. she could check up on us. Exactly. Um, so, uh, yeah, my folks did we got over it pretty quickly. All right, so that's it for this week's Ask the Bellhop segment, our October AMA. If you'd like to read more gaming and game advice, be sure to check out our blog at tabletopbellhop.com and click on Gaming Advice. Uh, if you got a question for us, head over to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop, or email us at questions at tabletopbellhop.com, or just show up on Wednesday and ask it right in our chat room. 